Good day dear students. I am Dr. Mitra, Associate Professor from the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics. Uh, let us go on to the next session of Raw Online Dental. Now we are going to see a very important topic from the exam point of view, which is going to be pulpotomy and apexification, which is a very important short note question in your exam. Now over to the contents. The contents of today's class is going to be the definition of pulpotomy and apexification. We are going to see in detail the classification of pulpotomy and the objectives of pulpotomy and apexification. What are the indications and contraindications for pulpotomy and apexification? What are the medicaments used for both and in detail the clinical procedure? What is the mechanism of heart tissue barrier formation by your calcium hydroxide and MTA which is your mineral trioxide aggregate? Then we will see the treatment outcome, the prognosis. Then we will also see one more important short note question what is revascularization and we finally see the conclusion. Coming to the definition of pulpotomy. So pulpotomy it can be defined as a procedure in which a portion of the exposed coronal vital pulp is surgically removed as a means of preserving the vitality and the function of the remaining radicular portion. So what you understand from this definition is that in pulpotomy only the coronal pulp, the inflamed or infected coronal pulp is completely removed whereas the pulp that is present inside the radicular dentin is maintained so as to maintain the vitality of the particular tooth. So it can be also be described as a surgical removal of the partly or completely inflamed coronal pulp tissue up till the level of the healthy tissue retaining the remaining vital pulp and for subsequently followed by the placement of a protective medicament over the excise site. So this is about the definition of your pulpotomy. Coming to the objectives. So the main objective of pulpotomy is that by removing only the infected or the inflamed coronal pulp and by maintaining the healthy radicular pulp, we are preserving the vitality of the radicular pulp. That is the first objective. There is also relief of pain in patients suffering from acute pulpalgia, acute pulpitis and if there is any inflammatory changes present in the pulp tissue. And one more important objective is that you are ensuring the uh, normal apexogenesis. You are ensuring the normal apexogenesis. The no apexogenesis means it is a normal physiological root development. Especially in an immature young permanent teeth with a wide open apex. Uh, thereby preserving the vitality of the radicular pulp. So the three main objectives of pulpotomy we have seen now. Coming to the indications of pulpotomy, this is an important short note question. First indication, mechanical or carious exposure in permanent teeth with incomplete root formation. Tooth is vital and it is asymptomatic. The next indication, there is no radiographic evidence of root resorption or there is no radiographic evidence of any periradicular periodontitis. That is, if you take a normal intraoral periapical radiograph, you see there are no, there is no radiolucency or there is no evidence of any periapical changes in the radiograph. When the next indication is uh, when traumatic exposure, uh, especially of long duration, occurs in a young permanent teeth where the coronal pulp is likely to be inflamed or sometimes the uh, immature young permanent teeth may have a wide open apex it may be suddenly fractured uh, as a result of a road traffic accident an automobile accident or maybe a sports injury so it's basically a young permanent teeth the root formation or the closure of the apex is not complete it is still a blunderbuss canal it is having a wide open apex the root formation is not yet completed, the root closure, the apical closure is not yet completed. That time if accidentally a sports injury occurs or as a result of trauma, any automobile accident and the, the crown fractures and the pulp is exposed. That is the fourth indication. The fifth indication, the apical 3 to 4 mm of the pulp tissue is vital and the root development can be completed. The next indication, carious pulpal exposure occurs in an asymptomatic primary tooth. The next is chronic hyperplastic pulpitis also called as pulp polyp 
when it occurs only in the coronal pulp and if you see the radicular pulp is healthy. This especially when it occurs in a young permanent tooth. The last one, when there is continued root development that is evident radiographically, when you take a radiograph you can see that is the root development is being completed. Coming to the contraindication, patient is having irreversible pulpitis. So irreversible pulpitis means both the coronal, coronal pulp and the radicular pulp is affected. So in this sense there will be definitely a patient will experience night pain and patient will have sensitivity to on intake of hot or cold foods. So that time the indication is a conventional endodontic therapy or a root canal therapy is recommended. So you cannot do uh, your pulpotomy in patients with irreversible pulpitis. The next contraindication is when there is abnormal sensitivity to heat and cold. Next when there is chronic pulpalgia that is pulpal pain patient is having a chronic pulpal pain when there is tenderness to percussion or palpation that is when you percuss a tooth with your mouth pillar uh, that is your vertical percussion as well as your lateral percussion the patient is having pain and when there is obvious uh, periradicular radiolucency when you take an intraoral periapical radiograph or you can see even the widening of the periodontal ligament space or you can see a definitive peri periradicular radiolucency it can be like a, a cyst. Next, when there is marked constriction of the pulp chamber or the root canals, when you take an intraoral periapical radiograph, when you see any calcifications or any obliteration in the coronal pulp and the radicular pulp, then this procedure is not possible. When there is any abnormal mobility, when there is any grade 1 or grade 2 mobility also, this procedure will not be a success. It is contraindicated. Uh, when there is a presence of external and internal root resorption also, a pulpotomy is contraindicated. When there is definitive pulpal uh, necrosis, the only treatment is your uh, conventional endodontic therapy. Otherwise, you should go for extraction. The next is when there is a presence of a endoperiolesion, then also it is you have to go for your conventional endodontic therapy. Do not attempt pulpotomy. Uh, the last contraindication when there is need to take support from the endodontic post for the retention of the final illustration. That is, supposing there is, it's a grossly decayed tooth uh, with very minimal coronal tooth structure, you need to uh, build up the crown by using a core. A core is needed to reinforce the crown. That time, it's uh, when you, you have to keep a post. So that time, definitely you have to do your conventional endodontic therapy you can do a sectional obturation wherein only the apical upper apical 5 mm you will obturate with your gutta percha and then you can uh, place your FRC post or your cast post depending upon the particular patient and depending upon the particular tooth. Coming to the classification of pulpotomy. So depending upon the amount of pulp tissue removed and depending upon the type of medicament used, pulpotomy can be classified as cervical pulpotomy wherein the pulp is completely removed up to the cemento enamel junction that is the up to the cervical level of the tooth the pulp is completely removed that is your cervical pulpotomy. 